Hello, and welcome to Citrix Converge. Today, I would like to discuss with you an exciting new feature in development for virtual apps and desktops that we call the Image Portability Service. My name is Dan Lazar, and I am a senior product manager with Citrix, focusing on provisioning and virtual apps and desktop solutions. And with me today is our principal software engineer, John Babival. Today, John and I are going to discuss the overview of what the image portability service is and what are the key use cases that customers will be using the image portability service to, to solve for, as well as deep dive into how the service works and providing some code level examples about how to leverage our RESTful interfaces and other forms of automation that we've developed for customers to use to deliver and develop solutions built using the image portability service. Before we get going, it's important to note that the content in this session should not be used for purchasing decisions. The timing, development, and release of any of the features or functionalities discussed are subject to change without any kind of notice. So please use this session for informational purposes only, and we hope you'll enjoy the content we have. Image Portability Service provides our customers with a simple set of workflows to manage their machine catalog images from their on-premise resource locations across to resource locations hosted in a customer's public cloud subscription, all managed from Citrix Cloud. The way image portability achieves this is by providing a library of REST endpoints that are hosted within the Citrix Cloud platform alongside a set of automation capabilities we've developed to work in conjunction with the cloud service APIs to create a multi-phased workflow that gives customers uh, an extremely flexible and customizable set of tools to drive an image from one platform across into a different platform in the public cloud. Historically, this type of migration workflow is a very complex undertaking for our customers, uh, involving lots of complex tooling and utility development and uh, a lot of combinations of third-party tools and solutions that uh, often, you know, end up with kind of a subpar or at least a, a not very seamless experience or, or a, a simplified solution on the customer's part. With the image portability service, we aim to make this uh, as simple as possible. And most importantly, the service provides you with unique capabilities that are very specific to the Citrix use cases you have for delivering these, these workspace images into your different platforms. Let's talk a little bit about what the key use cases are for us to have developed the image portability service to, to solve for some of these challenges. Typically, when we talk to customers who are on the journey of adopting cloud solutions, they tend to fall into three categories. Initially, at the beginning stages of this journey, you'll find customers who are most interested in adopting solutions that help take them from an on-premise work, workload environment into one in the public cloud. And a lot of the times, the reasons that they're motivated or, or often needing to adopt cloud in that use case is to solve for things like disaster recovery, bursting and capacity management. And along with those comes a need to simplify image management because anytime you're adopting new or multiple platform solutions within a complex enterprise environment, that increases the complexity for managing the resources across those different platforms. So simplification of image management in multiple different platforms becomes a core value for customers. Often, once customers have adopted cloud solutions, they will quickly see the need or, or have the demand to expand those solutions within the public cloud that they've, uh, you know, that they've begun to, to move towards. Um, within public cloud, there is this desire to uh, create additional capacity across regions within public cloud. 
Some of the uh, common reasons customers will want to do this is for geo expansion, roaming user use cases, uh, additional resiliency and high availability. And you start to talk or hear a lot about cost optimization as it relates to multi-regional deployments. And then finally, the, th the third category for customers who have kind of gone on this journey of cloud adoption is that they might actually be looking at multiple public clouds. And some of the core use cases or reasons for public, multiple public cloud adoption are similar, geo expansion and additional high, high availability and resiliency. Uh, but in particular, we start to hear from customers who are interested in cost optimization and the operational benefits and flexibility provided by adopting multiple cloud solutions. In particular, we believe that Citrix has an opportunity to pro provide a very uh, valuable and differentiated service from uh, virtual apps and desktops with the image portability service in providing seamless, flexible, and simple image management solutions that can span any public cloud solution. Let's take a couple minutes here to discuss at a high level how the image portability service works. You'll see here on this diagram depicted a typical virtual apps and desktop service deployment where we have an on-premises resource location that is hosted within a customer's local or on-premise data center. We have a resource location that's located in the customer's public cloud subscription and a couple other standard components required for Citrix cloud deployments, such as the connector appliance. We also have here a site-to-site -site connection between the two sites that allows there to be connectivity, direct connectivity between the two environments. As we look at the image portability service, it's important to note that we've provided a set of REST interfaces or REST endpoints that are hosted within Citrix Cloud. And these are available to our customers to use to develop their own automation and their own programmatic solutions for driving the workflows that I'm going to describe. In addition to the REST endpoints, we've also developed some PowerShell scripted example code. This code is open sourced and is available in the Microsoft PowerShell gallery. And its intent is to provide our customers with example automation that they can use to number one, understand how to automate using the image portability service. And number two, to take and customize or develop to, into their own uh, for their own purposes to automate these workflows. And of course, if the out of the box scripts are acceptable, uh, customers can use them as is, uh, or again, they can make changes to them as needed. As we look at the different steps involved that you can see noted on this slide here, we break down image portability workflows into four categories. The first is what we call an export. When a customer executes an export operation, what really is happening here is the customer has told the image portability service that they have a disk or an image, if you will, that resides currently in their on-premise hypervisor, and that this disk is a disk they wish to have migrated into a public cloud platform. Invoking our APIs, we will connect into, through the connector appliance, and deploy and, and, and while deploying resources into the on-premise data center to manage this process, we will connect into the customer's local hypervisor and we will extract and copy out, make a copy of the local disk that's sitting in the hypervisor to a shared storage location on the customer's on-premise infrastructure. Once that process is completed, the customer can move into phase two of the workflow which is where they would upload the bits for that disk into the target public cloud environment. It's important to note that at the upload phase of the workflow, there are not any REST endpoints that are uh, available in Citrix Cloud to manage this part of the workflow. The reason for this is mainly because the customer needs to provide this connectivity from site to site. At no point in time during the execution of the image portability workflows, are we permitting or allowing the bits or the actual data for the customer's image to exit their network or their direct control? And for this reason, point-to-point -point connectivity 
And the actual upload of the bits is something that the customer must maintain full control of, and they must be driving that part of the operation. As such, it's not a part of the workflow that, that Citrix Cloud has direct awareness of or is directly managing. In the future, perhaps we would look at expanding the image portability service to also manage the upload phase of the workflow. But today, this is a, a, an external component to the workflow. With that said, we have provided PowerShell automation, again, as an example for customers to use to help to automate this part of the workflow as well. That PowerShell code can, again, be modified by the customer directly to suit the needs or specific characteristics of their environment. Or if the customer does not wish to use our provided examples, you can develop your own automation around this phase of the workflow and do this in whichever way makes sense for you. Once the disk has been uploaded successfully to your public cloud storage, you then let the image portability service resume management of the workflow through execution of the migrate REST endpoint. There's a lot that happens during the migrate phase of the workflow, but similarly to the export phase in the on-premise resource location, we will again deploy resources from the connector appliance deployed into your public cloud subscription in order to drive the migrate part of the, of the, of the workflow. There's a lot that happens to the image during that phase. For example, we will remove or disable the components within the image that enable the on-premise platform to function. So things like the hypervisor tools for the source platform uh, would be removed and disabled from the image. Uh, additionally, we will in inject and install correctly the components that are needed in the image in order for it to be able to run in the target public cloud platform. In addition to this, we provide parameters during the migrate phase that allow you to automatically reconfigure the, the VDA, the virtual delivery agent, in order that you can configure correctly for the new resource location where it will be deployed. Um, among the things we support as part of automatic VDA reconfiguration are uh, repointing the VDA to new cloud connectors that would be in your public cloud, for example. Uh, we also allow you to do things like change the mode or settings within the VDA or even the components within the VDA. As an example, if your source image was being used with Citrix provisioning, um, it would have a different set of components installed than if you wanted to or had a use case for that image to use uh, machine creation services. For one, you would not have the provisioning target device software installed uh, and the VDA would have some different components in the case of machine creation services. Uh, during the migrate phase of the image portability workflow, we actually will provide you options to automatically reinstall or reconfigure components of the VDA to change the, the target provisioning. So that if you were, again, starting with a provisioning services image and telling the, the pr uh, portability service that your target environment would be machine creation services, we will do things like remove the PBS target device software within the image, and then automatically install the components within the image uh, in order to enable machine creation services. Any changes we make to the VDA during this workflow uh, will be maintained at the same version that is currently installed in the image that you uh, started with. Um, we support VDA automatic reconfiguration for a specific matrix of VDA versions, that includes kind of uh, the most recent version or releases of the VDA. Once you've finished with the migrate phase of the workflow, what you'll have there is a disk, a copy of the disk that you uploaded, but that has been modified so that it is now able to run uh, stably and, and correctly within the target public cloud environment. That migrated disk can be used from that point immediately to create a machine catalog in, uh, in virtual apps and desktop service for machine creation services. If, however, you are one of the lucky customers who's also been uh, testing out the new provisioning services on Azure feature, which is also in tech preview, then you have available to you uh, one additional phase of the image portability workflow, which we call the publish phase. 
For customers who wish to further extend the use of image portability to deploy and deliver their images to provisioning services in Azure, you can now execute a publish on the disk that was migrated, uh, step four on this diagram. And when you execute the publish work uh, phase of the workflow, we will take the uh, migrated disk, we will uh, inject the PVS target device software into that image, and we will uh, deploy that disk into your um, PVS on Azure VDisk store so that it is ready for streaming with provisioning services. And now I'm going to hand the presentation over to our principal software engineer, John, who's going to uh, take you through a deep dive of how to use the various REST interfaces and automation that we've developed around the image portability service. Hi, my name is John Babavel. I'm an engineer on the provisioning team at Citrix and the architect for the image portability service. Now that Dan's given you the overview of what image portability is for, I'd like to go over some of the details about how the APIs work. The image portability service is a CVAD API, so it has all the same semantics and requirements of the other CVAD APIs that you're hopefully already familiar with. This is a short session, so we're not going to cover a lot of the basics. Just know that it's a REST API and the headers and authentication work the same way those other APIs do. And there's a lot more general documentation and training that you can look to for those details. The image portability service also depends on another relatively new Citrix component that you may or may not be familiar with yet, and that's the connector appliance. The details of what, why, and how are something you might want to read up on outside the context of the session if you're not already familiar with the connector appliance, but I'll explain what we use it for in this context. The image portability service leverages our provisioning technology to create a small worker appliance in the specific environments that are targeted by portability operations. Once this appliance is created, the service sends it the commands it needs in order to complete the export or preparation jobs you want it to perform. These commands and the provisioning operations and the actual binary bits that make up the worker are relayed through the connector appliance, and the responses are relayed back to the cloud through the connector appliance. When you're using the image portability service, you don't need to interact with the connector appliance. Its operation is completely transparent, but you do need it to be there. Now let's talk about the major workhorse calls themselves. The first call I'd like to talk about is the export call. Before we get into the details for this specific call, let me take a moment to talk about the endpoint URIs for image portability. This will be especially interesting if you're watching this session in the future. The intended public endpoints for image portability will be fronted by the same application gateway as the other CVED REST APIs. So the host name of these endpoints are currently placeholders for the preview version. At some point when the service is generally available, and actually probably before then, the new endpoints will be online and these specific endpoints may or may not still work. However, we will keep the official documentation up to date. So before you try and run any of these calls, please go check the docs. This is the body of an export call and there's a lot going on here. The service needs to know a lot about all the pieces involved with each operation. And since it's a stateless service, all of those details need to be provided in each call. The first two keys of the body for an export operation are common to all of the image portability operations. The platform lets the service know what parameters to expect in the rest of the body and which plugin to use on the back end to talk to the platform the operations will be running on. The platform credential ID is the ID of the credentials the service will use to authenticate to the infrastructure and performance functions. The reason this is an ID is because we don't want you to be passing secrets around every time you want to perform an operation, and you may not want the person who's authorized to call this endpoint to necessarily have the credential to the underlying environment. We'll circle back later and talk about credentials and security, but for now, know that this is a reference to a credential that you'll provide elsewhere. The next set of keys in this request body tell the service what it needs to know in order to contact the infrastructure. Here in the case of the vSphere environment, we need to know the host name and port of the vSphere services, and if necessary, enough information to tell the service how to know it should trust the identity of the endpoint that responds. Additionally, we need to know what resource location this infrastructure resides in. The image portability service doesn't have direct access to your infrastructure, so it needs to perform its work through a cloud connector. It uses this ID to determine which cloud connectors are the ones on the same networks as your infrastructure. Every platform has its own way of organizing resources, so the next options, data center, resource pool name, data store, and network, 
Tell the service the details it requires to find the image you're interested in performing the operation on in the context of a vSphere environment, as well as what resources it can use to manage the operation itself. There are some requirements on the resources listed here. For example, the data store has to have enough free space to store a copy of your image and some extra space to store the image of the temporary virtual appliance that's used to run the export job itself. The network has to have connectivity to both the connector appliance that's managing the operation and the storage you want to export the image to. And most importantly, the source disk name is the path to the specific image you want to export. The last set of keys relate to where the output image should be written. Currently, the export location must be an SMB file share. Azure Files is supported as the SMB share. The path within the file share and the file name need to be included. The prepare call is very similar to the export call. In this case, you can see that the platform is Azure and the platform options represent Azure specific details. The limitation with the network is similar as well. The virtual network needs to be able to contact the connector appliance in the specified resource location. There are a few operation specific parameters in the prepare call that are worth pointing out. The first is the list of connectors. These are host names to the delivery controllers just like you would pass to the VDA installer. After moving the image to a new platform and resource location, the addresses should be different than they were in your prior environment. And if you provide the list, image portability will take care of reconfiguring things for you automatically. There's a second list here, which is a list of tags. The disk that's created as a result of this operation and any transient objects that we create while the process is running will be tagged with the key value pairs provided here. You can specify whatever tags you want. They're completely optional. And the intention is for you to use them to integrate with other automation, accounting, or auditing processes that you may have. The export and prepare operations are long running asynchronous tasks. So when you post a job, you're not gonna get success or failure immediately. You're gonna get a status document back that contains an ID. You can call the jobs endpoint with the ID to check on the progress of your operation or to cancel it. If the job fails, the error field in the status document will hopefully contain useful information to help you understand what went wrong. And you can pull this endpoint to keep track of the progress of the operation. When your job is complete, it leaves the relevant artifacts behind in your environment. For an export, this means you're going to have a VHDX file on your SMB share. For prepare, it means you're going to have a platform specific disk available to create a VM or a machine catalog from. In Azure, this will be a managed disk. For GCP, it'll be a compute engine image. Let's talk in more detail about credentials and secrets. The image portability service is an automation tool for managing resources in your environments. It can't do that without access to the resources you're asking it to manage. That said, none of the multi-tenant components of the service have direct access to any of your resources at all. Direct access is delegated to your connector appliances, but we don't store credentials on your connector appliances either. The image portability service provides an endpoint to allow you to store secrets in the Citrix Cloud platform such that they can only be accessed by your connector appliance and only when it needs them. You can then refer to these credentials by the ID provided in your jobs. Only the user who configures the service needs to know the secret information and later callers to the image portability service cannot retrieve the secrets. The credential endpoint requires each credential to have a name and a type. The name is the ID you will use to refer to the credentials in your other operations. The type is to satisfy the specific credential format requirements of various platforms and the supported types are documented in detail in the open API spec. Now that we've gone over the basic technical details of how to call the APIs and services, I'm going to hand you back to Dan so he can tell you more about how to get access. I'm very excited to let everybody know that Image Portability Service is available in Tech Preview now. If you have a need to migrate your images across multiple platforms from on-premise to cloud, we would absolutely love to have you enroll for access to the tech preview and, and help us start validating and testing out this, this really exciting new technology. Uh, a couple points to note around what is supported currently as, as the features in tech preview. Uh, today, you can use image portability service if you are running on-premise with VMware vSphere and are delivering uh, 
Citrix images from that environment using either machine creation services or provisioning services. So our source platform is VMware vSphere with MCS and PVS. You can also use the service if you are intending to deliver those images or manage those images across to either Azure or Google Cloud Platform. The use case for image portability as previously discussed is a migration use case in the sense that you can use the service to tactically take an image from one platform and deliver it into another. In the future, we will absolutely be looking at expanding this use case to include things like orchestration of the workflow to provide more intelligent uh, uh, management of the process and to maintain a relationship between your source images and your target images that would provide some really exciting new capabilities in the future. Today though, we're talking about a simple migration use case. Site connectivity requirements for the image portability service are customer managed, meaning that the connectivity from your on-premise resource location to your public cloud subscription must be provided by the customer and managed by, by the customer directly. Operating system support for the image portability service includes Windows Server 2016 and 2019 and Windows 10 version 2004 or later. Access type currently for the service is via API directly uh, using our REST interfaces, or you can use the PowerShell automation examples that we've provided and are available for download in the Microsoft PowerShell gallery. And finally, Regional access to the image portability service is currently available globally across all of the, the Citrix control domains in the US, in EU, and also, also in the Asia Pacific region. Here on this slide, there's a link for enrollment to the image portability service tech preview, and we will be sure to uh, provide you this link directly following the presentation as well. On behalf of myself and of John and of the Citrix team working in Converge, we'd like to thank you very much for your interest in the image portability service. And we cannot wait to see how customers will be developing and building automation around this service going forward. Thank you and have a great day.